Hello and welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today I'll be going over power strips in medical facilities. I'm covering material from ASHI, Triplite, and NFPA 101. There's four kinds of power strips allowed in medical facilities. Each is required to have a hospital grade cord and plug. Also, hospital grade receptacles, but they differ in mounting requirements and electrical protection circuitry. The most basic power strips are the UL1449 and the UL1363. The UL1449 are allowed in business administrative areas, but not in the patient treatment rooms. The UL1363 is allowed in patient treatment rooms outside of the patient vicinity for non-medical equipment. The patient treatment vicinity is defined as a 6 foot extending from the patient in all directions and 7.5 feet up the walls from the floor. Since these power strips are the most basic, I won't waste any more time talking about them. Next we have the most complex power strip, the UL6601-1. This power strip features an active protection circuitry which disables power to the receptacles until all the power conditions are met. The UL6601-1 is allowed to be used in patient treatment vicinity. Be sure that the UL6601-1 is not installed on equipment that may end up in an operating room. Operating rooms often have isolated power, which puts active voltage on the normally neutral line. This power monitor circuit will not allow electricity to turn on to the receptacles with the power on the normally neutral line. The UL6601-1 needs to be inventoried and inspected annually. The last kind of power strip I'd like to go over is the UL1363 Alpha. This power strip is used on mobile medical equipment carts and IV poles. The UL1363 Alpha has a circuit breaker on both the hot and neutral incoming lines. There's no active power monitor circuitry in this power strip, so it's ideal for operating rooms. There's specific rules for using the UL1363 Alpha. It needs to be permanently mounted and its removal requires using a tool. Also, all UL1363 Alpha power strips need to be inventoried and inspected annually. I prefer to mount these strips using stainless pop rivets. Stainless pop rivets have a strong professional finish without sharp edges. Do not use aluminum rivets. They're weaker and aluminum won't hold up to the strong caustic chemicals used for cleaning in medical facilities. If the power strip needs to be used, NFPA 101 gives the following guidance to ensure that staff uses them appropriately. Number one, prevent cords from becoming tripping hazards. Number two, connect devices so that tension is not transmitted to joints or terminals. In other words, no hanging power strips or equipment. Number three, no daisy chaining of power strips. Number four, proper insertion of plugs into receptacles so that no part of the metal prongs are exposed. Number five, no overloading of power strips with high load devices like heaters, coffee pots, or printers. Number six, power strips are properly routed without cords going through walls, ceilings, floors, or similar openings. Number seven, power strips are not used in areas where air circulation is limited as this may lead to overheating. Number eight, power strips that are damaged in any way need to be removed from use. And number nine, in power strips near water sources, use of ground fault circuit interrupters, GFCIs, may be required. Thanks for watching this video on power strips and medical facilities. I'd like to give a special thanks to Triplite, ASHI, and NFPA for their guidance on this matter. If you liked the video, give me a big old fat thumbs up. We've got plenty new videos coming in the next few weeks.